What's up everyone, my name is Jory, also known as Delvage, and I'm not here to waste your time. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to go from a novice to a person that can maybe do some things in Photoshop. This might be the most valuable 20 minute video you ever watch on YouTube. Start the clock. So the first thing that you want to do when you launch Photoshop is go over to edit and then preferences and then you can just go to general because we're going to be tweaking a couple of things. So as we can see this menu pops up down here and you can copy the exact settings that I have set for everything but I want to go over a couple of really important ones. So the first thing you want to check is making sure that you always resize image during place. Make sure that is checked in the interface options. I like having my color scheme as the darkest one right here. I mean, you can go lighter if you really want, but I don't like the look of that personally. I prefer working in the dark mode version, but that is basically personal preference. Inside of the workspace tab, we want to make sure we have the open documents as tabs checked and that is going to open every new document as a separate tab inside of Photoshop. That's very important for a consistent workflow in my opinion. Going down to our export settings, we want to make sure that it is checked as PNG and transparency is always checked. The quick export location is important if you want to quickly export through the layers panel. I like to do that sometimes when I'm working with individual pieces. Pieces, so that is a good option to have there. Also, the metadata as none as your preset always helps when you're exporting as PNG. Inside of the performance tab, this really depends on your graphics card or if you have a graphics card in general. Personally, I do have a GeForce GTX 1080 Ti, which is a relatively nice graphics card and that's going to help with my processing inside of Photoshop. So I always make sure that I have that checked. Below that, we wanna change our history statuses to at least 50 50 to preserve that ability when we're actually working. That means we're going to be able to go back 50 times from our previous edits to change anything in case we mess up. If you have a really fast computer, like faster than mine, you can probably go even higher than that. I mean, to be honest, I could go higher than that, but I want to keep it relatively low so that when I'm working with large files, it doesn't slow down the program too much. Going down to units and rulers. Now this is going to depend on where you live in the world. You can change this from inches to centimeters or millimeters if you really want and uh, you can change this type from points to pixels or millimeters I just leave it on points that's totally up to you click OK on those settings and then go over to window workspace and make sure essentials is checked because we are going to be working in the essentials workspace for the entirety of this tutorial obviously there are going to be a bunch of different tabs here if you want to check those out and play with them by yourself but Photoshop is a really large program and to get through it in 20 minutes we're only going to be focusing on the essentials tab today and go ahead and click the create new button right here and then I'm going to use a template which is 1920 by 10 and you can copy these exact settings on your preset if you want but just scrolling over to the right side here there are a lot of presets that Adobe has set up for specific things that most people in Photoshop need for their business or for their projects but I'm just gonna use this file format click the create button at the very bottom and now we're given our document page at the very top left hand corner of your screen are going to be all of your essential settings for the program underneath that are going to be some more minute settings for specific tools that you're using so that's this bar right here to the left is our toolbar which contains all of the tools in Adobe Photoshop outside of the stuff that's already at the top of the menu towards the right hand side are some areas for tabs that you can drag over the very important ones that we're gonna be covering today are the layers panel and the history panel the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and create a rectangle so go over to the little shape tool that looks like this on the toolbar if you don't have this one selected, just right click and choose it from the drop down. Once we have that selected, I'm going to click and drag anywhere on our document and it's going to create a rectangle of that size. Just release that, change the fill to something that doesn't match the background color. So for me, I'm going to choose black and now we have our rectangle. Moving away from the toolbar for one quick second, we're going to go ahead and check out the layers tab down here at the right hand side of our screen. And this is where the majority of our work is going to be happening. 
add. Inside the layers panel, we can double click on a specific layer to bring up the layer styles panel. We'll get into that in a little bit. You can create a new layer by clicking this button at the very bottom. You can delete the layer by clicking this button next to it. You can create a group, which is selecting multiple layers and putting them into a group if you want to do that. We have our adjustment layers down here, so we can create an adjustment layer. We'll get into that in a little bit as well. We have our mask options, and then we have some layer styles and link layer tools that we won't get into in this video because of time purposes. Next to the layers panel in my Photoshop is the history panel, and if you don't have that selected, so say we want to close this tab group, we can go over to window and then find the history panel right here, and that should pop up somewhere on your screen, and you'll be able to just drag it around wherever you want inside of your document. Moving back over to the toolbar here, I'm going to go through some basic ones so you guys understand some of the things that you actually have up your sleeve in Photoshop. So moving at the very top here, we have the move tool, and that's just going to allow you to move stuff around on the selected layer. Underneath the move tool, we have the marquee tool, and I have the rectangular marquee tool selected right here, and that's going to allow you to select a certain amount of pixels on screen by just clicking and dragging for a selection. Underneath the marquee tool, we have the polygonal lasso tool as well as some other lasso tools, and that's more of just kind of a click and create a selection on that front. Moving on from the lasso tool, we have the magic wand tool, and because our layer is just a black box, it's not going to do anything special if we select it, but if you have colors that are very closely related, it's going to distinguish between those colors and only select that specific color or color group, depending on your tolerance level at the top of your screen. So play around with that in your own document. Underneath the magic wand tool, we have the crop tool, and that's pretty straightforward. It'll just crop your document by dragging the corners. Underneath that, we have the eyedropper tool. We're gonna skip over this tool, it's not very important. The eyedropper tool will allow you to select a color anywhere on screen. So for example, if we wanted to have a blue box inside of this black box right here, I'm gonna go ahead and create that. There we go, we have a blue box now. And we wanted to select this blue color as our foreground. Well, we can just click the eyedropper tool on that color and all of a sudden we have it in our foreground. A very useful tool if you wanna get very pinpoint precision colors, I use it all the time. Underneath that we have the brush tool. We're gonna to skip over the spot healing brush tool but all you need to know about that is that if you're working with like a good stain right there like in the description of the tool, it will remove that and replace it with pixels in the certain area around it. But this is the brush tool down here and it's very straightforward. You just click and drag with your foreground color. You can change the hardness up here in the settings and if you have custom brushes then you can import those and use those as well but brush tool fairly straightforward right click on that and we have the pencil tool which is just like the brush tool except it's just a little bit different and smaller and gives me really good reminiscent vibes of Microsoft paint so moving on from that we have the eraser tool down here again a very straightforward it will allow you to erase part of your document now you can change the opacity to something like maybe 35% if you you don't want to erase everything in one go, but I like to keep it at 100% most of the time. Uh, if you right click on the eraser tool, we have a magic eraser tool, and that works relatively similar to the magic wand tool, although it's a little bit different. Underneath the eraser tool, we have the gradient tool, and this is very simple. Just go to the top here where it shows you your gradient, and you can select something or create something yourself, and then just click and drag on your screen, and it will create a gradient for you. I'm pressing Control Z on my keyboard, by the way, to undo every time I have a gradient selected on the page. But again, very straightforward. If you right click here, we have some different tools as well, such as the infamous paint bucket tool from the early 2000s. Underneath the paint bucket tool and gradient tool, we have some blur and dodge effect tools. These are pretty straightforward. You just click and it will blur part of the image. Or if you have a different one selected, say smudge, it will do that effect as well. So I'm gonna click and drag with the smudge tool and it takes a little bit to load depending on how fast your computer is and how many pixels it has to calculate, but that is essentially what that tool does. Underneath that, we have the pen tool, and this is one of the more infamous tools in Photoshop. What it allows you to do is select a very minute amount of pixels in the order that you'd like, and you can click and drag to create a curve 
Alternatively, what you can do is you can choose the curvature pen tool and that works a little bit easier if you want to go ahead and create curves, but we won't get into that in this video. Underneath the pen tool, we have the text tool, one of the more important ones that you need to take care of in Photoshop. I'm going to change the color to black and then just press anywhere on your screen and depending on what font you have selected at the very top, I have Proxima Nova and Bold selected. This is going to create text on your document. Just press backspace and type whatever you want. I'm going to type YouTube just to show you some of the effects that you can make. You can go ahead and select the character option to give you some in-depth controls on the text that you have. Again, if you don't have the character window up, you can go to window and then select character and drag that over to your panel if you so wish. But in the character selections, what we can do is select the text by just dragging over it. And this is the italicized. This is to capitalize every single single letter which we already have and then there are some other ones such as like bold which is already selected for me but we can change some of these settings to create some really interesting text designs as you can see this increases the horizontal letter spacing which is a really interesting effect that I see in a lot of designs nowadays underneath the text tool we have the rectangular box tool that we just used earlier and if we right click we can create some other shapes as well including at circles and including custom shapes so so custom shapes will allow you to import into Photoshop and you can go ahead and click this arrow at the top and it'll already come preset with a lot of custom shapes for you to use. I specifically like using the arrows because arrows just, you know, I don't know, they just have a really interesting vibe to them. Underneath the shape tools, we have the hand tool and this will allow us to click and drag around the document. So say we zoomed in here, we can use the hand tool to pan around the document and it's just really useful to have if you're switching between multiple tools and you want to see what each individual area of your document looks like. Below the hand tool, we're going to touch on the foreground and the background colors. And these are again, very simple colors selected for you to use in Photoshop. There are going to be a bunch of different effects that are going to apply to the colors that you have selected on your foreground and background. Right now, my foreground is set to black and my background is set to this blue. In order to change those colors, you can just double click and then change to the color that you want. Also right here in your color picker, we have the hex color code, which is another really important aspect. If we say we wanted to change this to red and we wanted to get the blue back without using the eyedropper tool, what we can do is we can double click on our background color and copy the hex color code, right click, copy, and then go back to our foreground color in red, backspace, control V to paste it, and it will automatically have the blue color selected because we pasted the hex color code. All right, so now we're gonna move away from the toolbar for a little bit and I'm going to import a document of just a picture of a human being, very simple, and we're gonna play around with some of the adjustment layers at the bottom right hand corner of Photoshop. All right, so we are back in Photoshop and I have a new picture pulled up for us to play with. Now, really quick, you guys might see this background layer with the lock icon in almost every document that you open and that's completely normal. In order to disable the lock icon, we just right click and click layer from background and then just click OK and that's going to unlock the layer and you'll be able to delete it and edit it as normal. That's something I know a lot of people have questions about when they first start learning Photoshop, but we're gonna delete that for now and we're gonna go to the bottom of our screen where the adjustments layers are and we're going to go to hue slash saturation and that is going to create an adjustment layer above our current layer. Now if we click this button right here it's going to apply the effect only to the layer beneath it and that is really important because if we don't want the effect to affect other layers underneath then we can click that button and it's only going to affect again like I mentioned the layer that it's actually masked on. Inside the properties panel of this hue slash saturation adjustment layer we can change some of the the effect so the hue is just going to change a ton of the colors we can make her look like Hulk uh, or we can make her just you know change a bunch of different crazy wacky colors the saturation is just going to increase the fullness of the color so if we increase the saturation as we can see it does that or if we decrease it it's going to turn the image into black and white if we create another adjustment layer and go to something like curves we can change the RGB and luminosity curves in here so that's going to add a ton of contrast if we wanted to say add an S curve. Another one that I like to play with a lot is called the gradient 
and map and that is going to apply a gradient to selected areas of the image with like a smart technology or something like that. I don't really know exactly what Photoshop uses to, to determine which gradients go on what colors, but I like to use this a lot in some of my designs and as we can see we can create some really interesting effects uh, just by using the gradient map tool. If we want to decrease the opacity of a layer, we can just double click on it and then change the opacity to whatever we want. So say we only wanted that gradient map to have a 30% opacity, we can do that as well. Alternatively, if you want to get a different look, you can change the blend mode on the layer to, instead of having it at normal, you can go ahead and click on it using the down arrow key on your keyboard, scrolling through the different versions of the effect. So lighten looks pretty interesting, screen looks okay, and I'm just going to keep going down and down and down until I find something that I actually like. All right, it looks like I'm going to go with the lighten and then maybe change the opacity to something like 50%. If we want to hide the layer and show what it looks like without that layer applied to the document, we can click this little eye icon right here and that will hide the effect. I'm going to go ahead and create another shape on top of our image right here using the shape tool at the left hand side of our toolbar. I'm going to go to the eclipse tool and just hold shift dragging down so that it's perfectly centered and it's a nice red, <laughs> nice red circle. I'm going to right click on the layer and go to rasterize layer. I'm going to double click on it and we're going to open the layer styles panel and play around with some of the effects. So the bevel and emboss is fairly straightforward. If you select it, you can play around with the settings. And if we zoom into this red circle here, as we tone and play with the settings, it's going to look a little bit different, but that's the bevel and emboss. Underneath the bevel and emboss, we have stroke. And that's again, fairly simple. You can change between the position being outside inside or center. Personally, I like leaving it on outside or inside most of the time. Underneath that, we have inner shadow and inner shadow just creates a shadow inside of the layer. Very simple. We can play with the distance. We can play with the size. We can play with the angle that it's coming from, and we can also change the color and the blend mode that that color has the effect on. Underneath inner shadow, we have inner glow, which is fairly similar to inner shadow, although a little bit different. It just does create a nice glow effect on on the outside of our image as we can see if we play around with some of the settings. Outside of inner glow, I'm going to skip satin and move straight over to color overlay and that's going to change the color of the entire image and again, we can always change the blend mode if we want it to look a certain way. Going back to our layer styles, we're going to go to gradient overlay and it's just like the color overlay except we can now change an angle and we can change the scale and we can change the style from linear to like radial or something and we can see the effect that that has. We can change the gradients so to say something like maybe this yellow and orange one, change the opacity to maybe something like 50% and now we have like a yellow, red, orange circle and it looks really interesting. So I'm going to leave that on and go to pattern overlay underneath and hide the gradient overlay layer by clicking the little check mark box. On the pattern overlay we can change the type of blend mode that we want again and then we can also change the pattern. So. If we don't like this one, we can go ahead and just use this one down here. Again, you can play with this if you want. I'm going to change the opacity and then blend mode from whatever it was so we can actually see it and then go to scale. And if we play with the scale settings, it's actually going to zoom in the pattern. All right, so now that we have that set, I'm going to go back to multiply and change the opacity down and then I bring back the gradient overlay. There we go. All right. Now, so now we have a really interesting looking circle um, underneath those two effects. We have outer glow, which just creates a glow outside of the layer. Very simple to do. You can copy these settings if you want to get the exact same effect. Underneath outer glow, we have drop shadow, which again is pretty straightforward. It creates a shadow underneath the layer and we can play around with the settings to get exactly what we want. I'm going to play around with the opacity and the size. And now we've created a really interesting circle using all the layer styles in the program. So click OK, and that's going to apply a bunch of effects on the layer that we just made. If we want to change the scale and position of this circle, we can press Control T on our keyboard to bring up the transform tools and we can just drag it around to where we want it to be. We can hold Alt on our keyboard and we can also hold Shift to give some different perspective effects. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to click and drag down and move it around our document to wherever we want it to be. So I'll just put it in the top left hand corner here. If we want to save our document, we want to go up to File and then Save As and we can 
save it as a PSD if we want to, and that is a Photoshop document. And you'll be able to open up a PSD into Photoshop and re-edit everything that you've already made. If you want to save it for web, then you want to go to File, Export, and then Save for Web Legacy, making sure you have PNG24 selected. If you want to change the color mode inside Photoshop, instead of having it be RGB, say you want it for print, you can go ahead and go to Image, Mode, and then CMYK Color, and it does have a couple of other options if you want to play with that a little bit. But for the purposes of web design and putting images and stuff online, RGB is going to be what you want to do. Well, that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to drop a like rating on the video. It really does help out the channel with the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe and hit the bell to stay notified on new content that I'm releasing on other design softwares, as well as other helpful content production tips. Until next time, guys, my name's Delvidge, and I'm out. Peace.